Okay, YouTube, today's topic is a very difficult topic. I've been going back and forth for actually two months about this topic. I've written my notes, I've had the notes, I've added more to them. But it's a video that I think can come across as, let's say, better than thou. Who? Me. Am I better than thou? No. Obviously I'm not. I'm just like everybody else. It's a very personal topic in the sense that it deals with things that I like and things that I don't like. So my opinion is all over this video, just like the other videos, but this is a, an extremely sensitive topic. And when I say don't live life like a caveman, I'm going to give you many examples. This is the warning, I guess, if you want to continue watching this video and what I'm talking about. And I make videos, especially ones like this, because I'm speaking to myself in the sense that I've actually been there in the past, or I don't want to go back to that past, to that lifestyle, living like a caveman. So let me read something to you real quick as I get started. A caveman is a stock character based upon concepts of the way in which Neanderthals, early modern humans, or archaic humans may have looked and behaved. The term origina originates out of assumptions. In other words, we as individuals have assumptions about what it was like to be a caveman, about the association between early humans and caves, most clearly demonstrated in cave paintings. Cavemen are simultaneously shown armed with rocks or cattle bone clubs, unintelligent and aggressive. They are generally depicted in art and literature as bearded and covered in hair and often wielding clubs and dwelling in caves. Whether this is true or not, it's something that if you ask someone to describe what a caveman looks like, what a caveman would act like, most likely you would get very similar responses, whether this is true or not. A, qua excuse me, a cave dweller, especially of the Stone Age, Someone who acts rough or in a crude manner. You've probably seen commercials. So easy, even a caveman can do it. Our perception usually is that cavemen weren't smart. However, I don't know. I, I speak for myself. I don't know if that's accurate or not. My analogy is to focus on the perceptions that we as individuals may have on cavemen and how that relates to how we live today in 2000 fill in the blank, the year. This video is not intended for me to offend anybody in any manner with my examples. So let's get started with my examples. Obviously, I'm going to begin with the financial aspects of living like a caveman. And then I'm going to take it outside of financial and just everyday lives. I'll give you a few examples. An individual may live like a caveman if he or she does not have a bank account for whatever reason, and I'm talking about adults, I'm not talking about children or even teenagers, I'm talking about adults. In 2017, 2018 is just a few days away, we have to have a bank account. When I say we have to, no one's going to force us to have one, but let's get with the age, with the times, and have a bank account. That's a very tough thing to say for someone who doesn't have a bank account for whatever reason. They don't want to hear that, but it, again, my intention is not to hurt anyone with my words. Don't live like a caveman if we overdraft. And believe me, a lot of the examples that I'm talking about, I used to do in my early 20s. Overdraft, that is expensive. That puts us under, and then we owe the bank, and then we owe them their fee as well. So overdrafting is not a good option. I've told my children that, you know, it's better to call the bank and say, do you offer overdraft protection? And the answer is going to be, yes, we do. Stop that. Block that. Because if you don't have the money, you shouldn't be using your card, whether it's your debit card, and it should block it. And I'd rather get embarrassed and say, your card has been declined. Another example, living like a caveman, is if you write checks, and I realize most of the young people don't write checks anymore, but they continue to bounce and bounce and bounce. That's not a good thing. Or if we as individuals 
go to a check cashing place because we don't have a bank account and so now we're going to have to pay someone to cash our, our check, whether it's a gift from someone or our paycheck. Let me give you another example, financial example. When I was in my early 20s, I wouldn't register my car on time for the next year, re-register. And one time, one time, I took a sticker off somebody else's car for the year and put it on my car, and I got caught. It worked for maybe a month, but about a month later, my car was being towed, and I knew it, and when I went up to the police officer and I said, can I get my car? And he said, no, you have a, a fake sticker on your car, and they towed it. And that was expensive for me. That was like living like a caveman. Me, not doing what I was supposed to. Because I knew the rules, and I just didn't do it. Living like a caveman is knowing what we need to do, but for whatever reason, we don't do it. Whether it's, we don't care, we're not motivated, whatever the reason is. Let me give you an example. Cell phones. I have my cell phone right over here. This has a lot of information. It's like a mini computer. There's no reason why, with the technology that we have today, we live like a caveman or a cave woman. There isn't any reason. Sometimes it's a decision. Sometimes it's like, hey, I'm okay living like this for whatever reason. And in my opinion, that's something that I've done in the past, and I don't like that. I am aware that struggles can happen to me, to you, to everybody, in part, as in our lives. That's just life happens, right? I'm aware of that. If it's temporary, good. However, if it's an un ongoing lifestyle where we're always reacting to things, maybe it's time to do something different. Reasons why people may live like a caveman or a cavewoman. It's not that important to change for that individual, like I said just a few moments ago. Or we are okay with living that way. Or an excuse could be, that's all I know, and it shouldn't. We shouldn't settle for excuses like that. We shouldn't compromise, we shouldn't settle, and we shouldn't give up with any of our challenges. Let's overcome those challenges. Take it from someone who has had several challenges in my early 20s, maybe up to the age of 24, and then I had to make things right and do things different. If we are living in a fog, think of it like that. Let's try to get out of that foggy area because we can't see our own hand that's right in front of us. Let's get out to where it's clear, even if it's an ugly clear, and say, okay, now we know where we are, but we're going to make this better than the ugly example. If we are lost in our lives, at least we know we are lost. Now, what's next? What are we going to do to improve that situation? What is our vision? And whatever that answer may be, I will say, start off slow and increase that speed. Increase that motivation to make things even better. Other examples of living like a caveman, and it's harsh, it sounds harsh, it's not intended to be harsh, is living in debt, rent to own businesses, and having the latest and greatest things, even when we can't afford it. Now, let us let me go away from financial examples and talk about something else, just other areas. This caveman mentality is we may not be good with this, with this, with this, but we're good with this and that. However, going back to that phone, I observe and often there are many people who are wizards with their phone, who can edit a photograph, who can add more photographs on social media and update their social media status many times per day. Where are we putting our energy? And unfortunately, we live in a time where social media is huge, especially with young people and also with middle-aged people that the question I ask is, where is your energy going? When it comes to health, another topic, and I've made topics, a video about this, it's not just the saying, health equals wealth, at least for me. It's not. Now I'm, my day just ended at work. It's time to go to the gym because I want to, and I need it at the same time. 
Health is wealth. It's not just the same. Do you know that looking back to when I was in my 20s, I was unaware of my health. I took it for granted. I was blessed with my health. I wouldn't exercise until I decided I was going to join the Air Force. And that is very common in the United States for many people, whether they're in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, or whatever. For me, joining the Air Force was a good thing because fitness, physical fitness is huge in the military. And I saw the benefits that I could get personally, not just because it's a requirement in the Air Force, but because I saw the stress go down. I saw the benefits of being consistent. My weight doesn't fluctuate. I've been at 158 pounds for a long time now. One of these things that I wanted to say about health is I spent some time in Europe in 2010 and a few years afterwards as well. And then when I came back to the U.S., I realized how lucky we are to live in the United States. I also realized how sometimes a lot of people are overweight here in the U.S. And that goes around the world as well, but because of the lifestyle that we have, because of the blessings that we have, that often people don't realize how blessed we are with our health when it, until something negative happens to our health, until we're affected with our health. So it's a very touchy subject as well. Finances and health and people's weight and my weight and your weight, it is a touchy subject. So I understand, again, I'm not coming from pointing the finger or feeling that I'm better than thou or him or her. It's not about that. And I've heard this a joke, let's say outside of the U.S. How do you know if he or she is American? And the answer that I saw here and there a few times was, if they're overweight, most likely they're American. And that's not true for all Americans. There is, that's, that's just not the case. But it's one of those things that, how accurate was that? That joke, or so-called joke. The million dollar question that I want to ask you, that I ask myself is, are we taking care of our health with exercise? time for ourselves to go for a walk, to go for a jog, to lift weights, to do whatever it is that we can within our limitations physically, and our nutrition. I Yesterday was a day off and I had a bison burger in Breckenridge in the mountains, but today I just want to make sure that I eat something that's healthier to include oatmeal. Don't get stuck with the attitude of that can't be fixed, or I can't, I can't be fixed. That's not a good thing. That's another excuse as well. And the reason I say that is I've used the example of my marriage. Coming up on 22 years of marriage, at the 15-year mark, we ended up in marriage counseling. And it's something that we needed to do and has blessed us seven years later because we're using those tools. Are you ready to live the perfect lifestyle? Think about that. What is your answer, yes or no? Well, here's the good news. The answer is there is no perfect lifestyle. Nobody's perfect. And we, as individuals, will never be perfect. That is good news, because now all that weight that we may have here, let it go. I'm not always going to weigh 158 pounds. There is no perfect lifestyle out there. So. All we have to do is be proactive in our lifestyle with our finances. I'm sharing with you how I think. Again, my opinion, our finances, our, our daily living at work, at home, on our time off, make the most of it. And the reason I share that is because life has gotten sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. And I don't know how many years I'm going to be around, but... It's one of those things that I want to maximize the moment and don't think that my life is a, an incredible life every single day that I'm doing something because that's not the case. I work just like everybody else. Somebody shared with me in a conversation today something that he said to me about myself and he said, I like the energy that you have, the excitement for life. 
even at my age. And the funny thing is, I'm 46, he's 46, we're just a few weeks apart in age. And to me, that was a compliment. And I was like, wow. I said, sure, thank you. But it meant a lot more than a thank you. There is a saying that Dave Ramsey, who's a financial personality, says that children do what feels good, but adults do the right thing. It's not a verbatim quote. It's somewhere around there. But do adults do the right thing? Some do, some don't. And, and that's one of the things. Again, I'm not trying to put pressure on yourself or myself and to say, hey, we're going to be perfect about all of our decisions. No, because I'm going to make a mistake today or tomorrow or next week. So are you. That's called life. Again, it's not a thing where perfection exists. Don't put that pressure on yourself. And let me end it with this. Invest in yourself. Sometimes people can't do that for us, and nor should we expect them to do that. Don't live in survival mode. I've lived in survival mode. Temporary, that's the good news. The even better news is once I made those adjustments and those changes and asked for help, life got even sweeter. Know your strengths. Know your weaknesses. Improve your weaknesses. Learn teach others, and never stop learning throughout your life. That is called the growth mindset. Again, very personal topic. It's not intended to harass anyone, to offend anyone at all. That's the good news because I know where I'm coming from. Hopefully you can take something out of this video and improve whatever, if anything, needs to be improved in your life. Have a great day. Take care.